I just finished shopping at Half Price Books, I am pleasantly surprised at the amount of books that I found. Most of these were just on my Goodreads like want to read and so I just kept going up and down aisles just to see what they had and I'm sorry I did not film too much. There were workers literally down every aisle and I was just like, eh, I'm not about to do this. I don't want to get kicked out because this is a, I would say, smaller Half Price Books than like the average size. And yeah, I just didn't want to cause like any ruckus or anything like that. So I tried to get as much footage as I possibly could, but I'm going to save all of the books that I purchased towards the end of this video when I kind of do just like a book haul wrap up. Right now I'm planning on going to Book People, which is an independent bookstore here in Austin, Texas. I'm currently very, very north. So I need to tail down there it stopped raining so that is a good thing and then i'm gonna see what they have i do have kind of a list actually of books that i have been wanting to pick up some of them they said that they were out of stock online and then there are some that they said that they had them on their shelf so i'm really hoping that they actually have all of the books that i'm wanting just because the ones that aren't apparently on their shelves like i haven't found them in barnes and noble i didn't find them in half price and they are relatively new but I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of like holding out hope because I really don't want to order these online. I'm so impatient and when I have to order books online, I just feel like it takes forever and ever in a day for them to come. So we'll see, that is my next stop and then we'll see what I can pick up. But yeah, you guys, I just wanted to do like a mid video check-in with you just to let you know that this half price, they're, they're really banging, you guys. They have a lot of good things in good condition. So anyways, stay tuned. We'll go to book people next. Everything glistens and everything's bright. Everyone's happy. Spirits are light I am sitting here Thinking Alone with my Drink As I do This time of the year Do you remember When love was around When we were Aglow The talk of the town when I'm sitting here drinking, I can't help but think about you, about us, as I do this time of the Now for the time that you all have been waiting for, we are going to talk about all the books that I picked up. So I had some footage as you saw earlier of me going to Half Price Books and Book People. I don't know what it is, I guess it's because it's the holiday season, but people have been out and about so like trying to record you guys was so awkward because I don't mind recording. But the thing is, I don't feel comfortable obviously like when people come into my shots or if they look at the camera, like I just don't want think I just don't want people to think that like I'm filming them for some weird reason. And so there were just a lot of people. Like every single aisle that I went down almost had like three people in them. And it was just really hard for me to like wait until those people left to like try and film for you guys and like find things and yeah, it was just a whole ordeal. But anyway, so I got a lot of books and this right here is my half price book like book haul as you can tell i got a lot of books the bookstore so i went to the one in round rock and i've never really gone there i typically go to the one that's like in austin but i felt like something pull me to that store specifically and i'm so glad that like whatever internal instinct i had was correct because yeah, I got so many books. Now, the first book that I have for you is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. So this is a book I was telling you about that I haven't really been interested in it per se, but I've had like a physical connection to it and I know that sounds super weird, but every time I've gone to the bookstore, I guess the past three or four times, I've always thought about this book, not the cover, but just the name. 
and every time I thought about it, literally it would show up like two seconds later. I would turn a corner in the bookstore, there it would be, or I would look at a different shelf, there it would stand, and like so on and so forth. And so I was in half price today, and I thought about it just to like say, oh, I wonder what, like about this book. And sure enough, it was right there. They had a lot of copies. This was actually one of the best copies that I found. The spine is not really cracked. Like there's a couple crackings right here, but other than that, it looks like no one read this and i think i'm not too sure i didn't realize that this was a movie adaptation so this looks like it's the main girl and the only reason i think that is because these look like screenshots from the movie and i think that's her right there could be wrong but i think that's the truth now if you don't know what this book is like me because i really don't i just gravitated towards it and the price wasn't that bad it was 6.49 i just picked it up now it says that it is 1939's nazi germany and we follow main character named lisa memminger it says she's at her brother's graveside when she finds a single object called the grave digger's handbook left there by accident and it's her first act of book thievery. So begins a love affair with books and words as Liesl, with the help of her accordion playing foster father, learns to read. Soon she is stealing books from Nazi book burnings, the mayor's wife's library, wherever there are books to be found. But these are dangerous times. When Liesl's foster family hides a Jewish man in their basement, Liesl's world is both up, opened up and closed down. In superbly crafted writing that burns with intensity, award-winning author Marcus Zusak has given us one of the most enduring stories of our time. Now, this is historical fiction set in Nazi Germany. I'd be very interested in, it's just something I never really think about. So maybe this, with whatever physical connection I have with this book, I know that sounds weird, but like, you guys, you just have to feel it to believe it. I'm connected to this book somehow and I really hope, I really, really hope that I end up enjoying this. I know a lot of people have uh, talked about this, they rave about this book. So this is definitely a book that I'm interested in reading and I'm kind of intrigued and curious to see what my thought process will be like during it and the feelings I will have after reading it. So we'll see. Up next, we have The Wilder Girls by Roy Power. This book has been on my TBR list for quite some time. Honestly, I can't remember if I saw this cover on Goodreads or if I saw this in store and then like put it on my Goodreads account. I really don't know, but I really loved the cover of this book. I find it very haunting and kind of just like very intriguing because if you can't see, I know it's kind of blinding with my ring light, but the girl's face is like unraveling and then there is a plant of or a vine maybe of some sort with flowers blooming inside her and i'm trying to figure out what that exactly means but basically this book we follow hetty so hetty is at the raxter school for girls and she's basically there under quarantine for 18 months because apparently there is a disease or i think it's a disease called tox that basically hit it's killed one by one all of the faculty members and the students that have got infected like their bodies are strange and very foreign and basically they just find themselves not leaving the schoolyard's fencing line but apparently there's a character named by it which these names are so cute by it goes missing and and hetty is like pretty much willing to do anything to find her friend which means going past the schoolyard's fence no longer being quarantined and when she does she basically finds out that there's more to their story to their life at the school and basically other things that she could just never wrap her mind around and i'm just super curious i mean this definitely is going to hit i think a little close to home clearly with the disease and quarantine and all that but nonetheless i'm really interested in this this seems like a very haunting thriller novel that i don't know like i feel like this is going to scare me just a little bit but nonetheless i'm super excited to finally have it in my collection and i can't wait to read it and see what my thoughts are about it up next we have the book of the month's version of the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed like the others you guys i mean this is in pristine condition i just feel like no one read this book i mean i could be wrong but it just looks like it hasn't been touched and so had to pick it up this book was only $12.99 too, so it really was a steal, especially for it being hardback. But in this book, this is a very popular book that I've just seen everywhere. So we follow a magazine like journalist named Monique. 
and she's unknown she's trying to jumpstart her career and evelyn hugo specifically requests her to come to her mansion and kind of tell her the truth about her life and like the secrets and the tragedies etc etc and monique is not understanding why she was picked because she is unknown she doesn't know evelyn evelyn is this huge hollywood star but nonetheless, she thinks that this is a really important career jump for her. So she goes and she listens about the seven husbands of her life. And I find that so fascinating. I feel like how cool of a character is she? You know, she has like all of these little romances. And in this book, we're going to see how Monique is somehow connected to Evelyn in some weird way. I don't know like what that could possibly entail or mean, but I feel like this is going to be a lot of romance a lot of heartfelt emotions, a lot of tragedy, a lot of heartbreak, all wrapped into this one neat little book, but I'm so glad I got my hands on it, you guys, because I've been wanting this for quite some time, but I just could never like justify getting it for the price. You know, hardbacks are always, hardbacks are definitely one of those things that I love to get for the aesthetic and look. I'm definitely a paperback person, but with books like these specifically, like the main popular ones, I love to have them hardback so I can finally put them on my shelves facing out. And yeah, I just finally got my hands on it and at such a steal, I think, for a price. The last book that I got was Ken Follett's The Pillars of the Earth. Now this isn't technically like looking new, like definitely someone has given this lots of love in the past. But nonetheless, I wanted to pick this up. So I've had this as like one of the major books that I've always wanted to haul this year and I finally got to it. It was $5.99, you guys. And I don't know why it's so cheap, basically. I was really surprised given at how massive this book is. And I even looked through like all of the pages or kind of just skimmed through them and like I don't see anything wrong with any of them. So kind of excited about how big of a steal this book is. But nonetheless, so this is a book that I find very fascinating because it's broken up in parts by the years. So I want to say, I can't remember what um, what year this starts. Oh, 1123. And then it ends closer to the ending, like 1174. So there are se like separate parts. So for example, it says you know, 1170 to 1174, and they have beautiful drawings of this cathedral church. Now, if you don't know what this is, basically it says, the pillars of the earth tells the story of Philip, prior of Kingsbridge, a devout and resourceful monk driven to build the greatest Gothic cathedral the world has known. Of Tom, the mason who becomes his architect, a man divided in his soul, of the beautiful, elusive lady Alina, or Elena, haunted by a secret shame and of a struggle between good and evil that will turn church against state and brother against brother. So I find this very fascinating just because I have heard that although there is a gothic cathedral being built, there's a lot of drama and relationships that come and go in this book. So it's kind of like the building of this cathedral is like in the background and so many moving parts happen that get this cathedral off the ground basically up and running and i've always wanted to to read this i feel like this is going to be a huge read you guys i mean this is definitely one of those books that i will have to take my time with and to go through it make sure that i understand everything what's been going on to put like my full focus and attention who knows maybe one day in the future i will actually dedicate like an actual vlog with this and just me picking it up and continue reading it who knows but i'm so glad i actually have this book i do know that ken follett has a lot of other books if i'm not mistaken and definitely want to get to those as well just because i do hear that his writing and like his world building is so breathtaking but can't wait and also you guys you see me like i'm messing with the book like throughout this whole video but it's because it's one of those like very flimsy books that just opens and stays open and i just love it it's something that's like highly addicting to be honest but nonetheless i can't wait to read this and yeah this big massive behemoth i need to figure out where it's going to be placed on my bookshelf that concludes my haul from half price bookstore 
Overall, I bought four books in great condition. The price, honestly, I could just not beat. And I'm so glad that I have these books now. They've been on my TBR list for quite some time. And the fact that I was able to get them before the holidays and before other people can get their hands on them, I am so shocked, so stunned. But I can't wait to put those on my shelf. Now we're gonna get into my haul from Book People. If you don't know what Book People is, it's a independent bookstore here in Austin, Texas. They just have pretty much anything and everything and I love going there because for the most part, I would say majority of books, they have these little cards that the workers there will fill out and it's like books that they love, little tidbits and odds that they think will capture the audience's attention so for example you know they'll have the synopsis but in their perspective and then like little details as to how it made them feel kind of what it's about if you love this book then you'll love this book like they just have little tidbits of information and i just love reading those cards i mean they're pretty much plastered everywhere almost on every book and it just takes me a lot of time to go through book people like i was there for a long time you guys i know i didn't get a lot of footage but yeah your girl was there and i found so many books that I have been wanting to haul forever but I'm you know I can't buy everything all at once so I'm glad that I got the books that I have now now some of them are new they're from a can't remember what video I did but it wasn't too long ago it was just a video of upcoming books that had been released now book people had majority of them except for two i need to buy them online they were out of stock in the store and that just tells me that these books are starting to get really popular which i'm so excited about but i did pick up a huge list of books i have been wanting before the holiday season and i'm so glad that i have them i keep looking because they're like right next to me anyways guys i am going to start sharing them with you the first book that I got at Book People is The Hidden by Melanie Golding. I talked about this in a previous video of just basically a book that I had been wanting to haul since it came out. It just came out and I am so excited that I finally have this book in my hands. It says, one dark December night in a small seaside town, a little girl is found abandoned. When her mother finally arrives, authorities release the pair, believing it to be an innocent case of a toddler running off. Gregor, a seemingly single man, is found bludgeoned and left for dead in his apartment. But the discovery of children's toys raises more questions than answers. Every night, Ruby gazes into Gregor's apartment, leading to the discovery of his secret family, his unusually silent daughter, and his mentally unstable wife, Constance who insists that she is descended from the mythological Selkies. She begs Ruby to aid in finding the seal skin that Gregor has hidden from her, making it impossible to return to her people. Detective Sergeant Joanna Harper's investigation into Gregor's assault leads her to CCTV footage of the mother-daughter pair from town. Harper realizes she knows the woman almost as well as she knows herself. It's her strange daughter, Ruby. No matter the depth of Ruby's involvement, she knows she will choose her daughter over her career. Steeped in local legend and exploring the depth of what it means to be a mother, Melanie Golding's newest novel is a lyrical and atmospheric folktale from the modern age. Yeah, that sounds absolutely stunning. This is definitely a, honestly, there's murder, there's mystery, there's thriller, and I am so excited to read this. First of all, the cover, it's definitely haunting, and it looks like, it's a kelp yard. Is that what it's called? A kelp yard? I know that they're like off the coast of California or somewhere in the west coast where there's like a bunch of like kelp. I keep wanting to say uh, neighborhoods, but I think it's like just a bunch of kelp all at once. And that's what it looks like. Just like a sea of kelp. I don't know why I keep saying kelp. But anyways, you guys, that is the hidden. And I'm so glad that I finally have it. Up next, we have Luminous by Mara Rutherford. This cover is so beautiful, you guys. There looks to be Leora, the main character. She has like a star just holding in midair in front of her. And then she has like two dogs. There looks to be a forest with a deer or a reindeer of some sort. And yeah, I feel like there's gonna be a huge quest, a huge journey with this just because we are dealing with a lot of magic in this book. So the main character, Leora, has magical capabilities because a star collided with her house. If you can believe that, that is so terrifying. And she knows that if she doesn't go into hiding, that the king's warlock will find her and will basically use her powers to enhance his. Now, of course, her fear actually comes about when the warlock ends up finding out who she is and what she's capable of. But the weird thing about it is that instead of taking her, he takes her little sister as a captive. And 
we kind of see Leora wanting to find out where she's been taken and how to get her back. But on top of that, her friend Evren actually goes disappearing just around the same time. And so she's trying to find Evren as well because he is one of the only people that knows about her secret. And so she's on a quest to find both of them. And I'm assuming she's going to find Evren because at the end of the synopsis, it does say that her and Evren may be the only ones who can stop the evil warlock. So really cute book. I think this is going to be quite magical. It's going to be absolutely breathtaking with all the adventure that we're gonna have. I feel like a war is going to be brewing, especially with this deadly warlock. And I really hope that it ends for the best for Leora. I don't know. I don't know what her powers could possibly be with a star colliding with her house. Like, what does that even mean? Does she just shine brightly? Like, what could she possibly do? I don't know. I'm really curious to see what it's going to be about, though. Up next, we have a brand new book called The Silent Woods by Kimmy Cunningham Grant. This book has been on my mind for quite some time because this is a like mystery thriller novel and i am super stoked to finally read this so in this we have a father daughter duo we follow cooper who is the dad and finch who is his daughter they live in a remote cabin in the appalachian woods and it's basically because cooper has some deep dark secrets that ultimately led them to be there like without any outsiders coming through and finch is just growing up with a bunch of books on her shelves of the real world so she is growing up and she's becoming more curious and more intrigued as to how the real world works and she's not really understanding why they live in this remote abandoned almost like cabin and there's only a couple people that know about them so we have cooper's best friend jake who comes once every winter to basically bring food and supplies and there's even a hermit named scotland he's mysterious he's local so i wonder what that means but basically Jake doesn't come up for this winter with food and supplies and so it basically sets off a chain of events that are going to be dangerous, possibly deadly, and Cooper will ultimately have to make the decision of protecting his family or letting these truths come out. And I don't know what he's going to pick. I don't know what could possibly have happened or what his secret is for them to live in like the middle of nowhere in isolation. And I'm really curious to see how Finch is going to react and how she's going to feel like once everything kind of sets off. Oh, and it also says that there is a stranger that I guess Finch gets to know. And it seems like this stranger is either dangerous or that Finch is just going to get too close with this person because she, you know, romanticizes the real world because she's obviously never seen it. And I just can't wait. This is a very short book as well. There's a little over like... Well, actually, it's a little under 300 pages. Yeah, so it's very short. You can pretty much fly through this. So I cannot wait to read this. I'm so glad that this book is finally out. You guys, one second. This is kind of funny. What is going on with like both of these basically having women unraveling their faces with shrubbery growing inside? Like, do y'all see that? So this is the new book that I'm going to talk about. It's called If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazier. And yeah, I'm going to talk about this, but I just wanted to quickly point that out that I have two books that ultimately look the same, but can be very different. So anyways, back to this book. So this is called If I Disappear, and ultimately this is about a true crime podcast lover named Sarah. Now, I gravitated toward this book because I love true crime podcast i follow so many i follow and that's why we drink which is honestly one of the most funny ones small town murders i mean pretty much the list goes on for me and so when i saw that this was about a true crime podcast person who's just infatuated with it as i am i had to pick it up but basically it says that sarah listens to her favorite podcast where rachel is the host however rachel goes missing and so sarah knows it's time to act rachel has always taught her to trust her instincts to begin her search, Sarah follows the clues hidden in the episodes to an isolated ranch outside Rachel's small hometown. She's convinced her investigation will make Rachel so proud, but the more Sarah digs into this unfamiliar world, the more off things start to feel, because Rachel is not the first woman to vanish from the ranch, and she won't be the last. Rachel did try to warn her. Yeah, I don't know about you, there have been times where I have honestly wanted to do a podcast, 
and sometimes i think that i would be a really cool like true crime person but i'm always terrified of doing those just because of how much potential recognition you could have and especially if you're talking about like very serious cases that have not been closed i mean i don't know it, it's such a crazy and dangerous world to be a podcast reporter nonetheless be the host of it and just put like all the details out there i've always wanted to do it but hey at least i can live vicariously through rachel and sarah and i cannot wait to start this i feel like there is going to be some haunting things in this book especially with rachel i wonder what happened to her and why she disappeared but i guess we'll find out in the book but i am so glad that i have this you guys i i'm so ecstatic that this is in my haul today just because i've been wanting this for quite some time i've definitely seen it in the bookstores here and there but yeah, patience is the key, you guys. And so finally I have it and I can't wait to read this. I just know I'm going to love it because it deals with true crime podcast. I know that's a silly thing to say, but hey, I'm the girl who probably listens to like 12 of those podcasts when I'm cooking, when I'm cleaning, when I'm getting ready for bed or just getting ready in general or traveling. I mean, yeah, I'm not listening to music. I'm mostly listening to true crime podcasts. So yeah, that's a little bit about me, you guys. If you were ever curious to my hobbies, other than this, it's a true crime podcast. Not me doing it, but me listening to it. Anyways, next book. Up next, we have a classic for you guys, and that is none other than Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This cover, oh my gosh, you guys. I kept going back and forth with getting this. Not because it's like weird or anything. No, I absolutely love this illustration. This is by R. Toledo. I mean, this cover is breathtaking. I don't know how he does it, but he makes it seem so magical and whimsical. And I've already read Pride and Prejudice a few times already, but I've never had it in my collection. And the last time I read it was for school, like six or something years ago. And I've always wanted to purchase this. Now, this is where I was very hesitant of picking this one up. So as you guys know, I've been trying to get more classics in my collection because right now all I have is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy and I haven't read it yet but there is this thing with classics with me that I don't know what I'm going to do so I want to buy you know those stereotypical hardbound classic edition books you know the ones I'm talking about where like the edge it's like red and then a gold and like red and then gold or like they have blues and they're the ones that you see in like those bookshops that you're like oh that's definitely a classic and a lot of people use them to decorate their bookshelves and stuff like that and i gravitate towards those but we all know that those could be very expensive they're hard to come by especially really good conditioned ones and i'm always just so hesitant to buy those when if and when i do see them because i'm not necessarily looking for them and then of course you have the penguin versions where just like anna karenina it's like you know half of it or not even half but like three-fourths of the book is the picture and then the bottom is like you know their name and it's like penguin or whatever you have those which i've always wanted to pick up which i did with anna karenina and then you have great editions like this one that stick out to you and i'm just having this hard time right now in my head like a battle or it's like what am i going to do am i am i going to end up with like three or four different prides and prejudices <laughs> that was really hard to say or like you know other different types of books just because i want them like the different covers you know what i'm saying you guys i don't know i, I i'm really having that like as a hard time so i was really hesitant to pick this up because book people did have like i swear it felt like 30 different types of covers with not only just pride and prejudice but with a lot of classics and i just ended up going for it because you know what like this cover makes me happy and like i said if I do end up getting another Pride and Prejudice book because of the cover, then that's on me. You know, that's money being spent that I think is going to a great place. I will always have like room on my shelves and maybe one day in the future I will decide whether or not to keep them all or to donate some. I, I really don't know, you guys, but it's kind of the battle. But anyways, this is Pride and Prejudice. If you don't know what this is, we follow Elizabeth Bennett, who is our uh, protagonist. She's very stubborn, but very down to earth, I would say kind of like has her chin up sometimes because she can make hasty judgments and she just has a very big family especially a big family full of girls and you of course this is a historical fiction where you know women need to be married off and have dowries and you know just kind of that's how they live a healthy and great life you know just finding the perfect man and of course elizabeth you know she 
she's like one of those characters i feel where she like wants it but at the same time she doesn't you know she's like i can handle myself and i'd rather see my sisters get married first and like all this stuff and then she meets mr darcy and if you don't know who he is he's basically like my personal tall dark and handsome guy like he was the blueprint like the foundation like when i first read pride and prejudice i was like mr darcy is like the perfect person for me and i always like i don't know romanticized him in my head and so anytime i was in a relationship or like when i met alex 11 years ago how long have we been together I, since 2011 you know like that was kind of my blueprint and i'm so i mean i'm really excited to find this you know we basically just see the relationship between elizabeth and mr darcy form and even though he has like just a mysterious aura surrounding him you know he has a lot of secrets and he's not really being upfront and truthful with Elizabeth, but of course, this lives to tell the tale of those secrets unraveling, and we get to see a different side of Mr. Darcy that typically the public doesn't get to see, like at all. And of course, we get to see Elizabeth swoon for him, which makes me swoon for him, which makes everyone swoon from him. So, yeah, this is just like a perfect classic romance, I think, with a lot of drama, a lot of hidden drama a lot of family secrets unraveling and not only that you guys but because of the like cover obviously it's beautiful but we have like those frayed uneven pages i don't know if the camera is like really picking up the detail i love books when they look like that just because it makes them look older obviously and well worn and used and i do have a couple books i can't think of the ones that i have right now that have the same edges and every time i see them i just gravitate towards these books and yeah, I don't know. I'm super happy with this and that's just a long-winded explanation. But yeah, this is my second classic in my collection. So I did another thing. I picked up another classic, same illustration, R. Toledo. And this is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And you guys, I feel I'm very embarrassed to say this. I don't know what this book is about. I know it's a classic. I know who Emily Bronte is. I've heard of this like numerous times. But I was never forced to read it in school and never saw a like film adaptation. I pretty much all I know is that there's a relationship and that there's tragedy and like family drama. That's all I know. Like there's no synopsis or plot in here. So I either will have to look that up myself like online or just start reading it without any other information other than that I know that there's romance and there's tragedy. And I think there's families, but that's pretty much it. I feel so weird saying that. I know that it's kind of shocking, I feel, and it reveals a lot about me. But look, you guys, I'm at this age and I've talked to you guys about this where I'm starting to really want to invest time in the classics. And I feel like this is just a really good way of doing so. I love the illustrations. It definitely gives me motivation to pick these up. Less intimidation, honestly, because I feel like classics can be very intimidating because of how they were written and i really don't know if this is like modern english or old english i, I don't know how this version is going to be but nonetheless i feel like i'm ready for it i feel like i'm prepared and yeah so now i have two classics right here making this a total of three on my shelf so my book collection is slowly growing in my hand here we have a historical fiction this is called the doll factory by elizabeth mcneil this book is so intriguing you guys so this is set in victorian london we follow the main character iris who is a current doll maker but has dreams of becoming a painter then we have silas a curiosity collector enchanted by all things strange and beautiful who has plans for his future too intent on expanding his singular collection he's searching for the perfect showpiece it says a toothless urchin is privy to the ambitions of both Iris and Silas. The boy weaves through the alleyway, sewing dolls clothes for Iris and providing Silas with unusual specimens. One afternoon, he heads for the construction site of the greatest museum London has ever seen. There in the shadow of a vast glass palace, he introduces Silas to Iris for the first time. It is a meeting that changes everything. As Iris strives to make her mark on the artistic world, she is unaware that Silas is inching closer and closer to his own dream. To him, she is a beautiful butterfly flitting through the streets of London. In his awful, utter aloneness, Silas only knows that the object of his obsession must be his or belong to no one. That sounds really creepy. I don't know if I'm going to like this character named Silas and I don't even know who this toothless urchin is or why they're involved in the first place. But let's just hope that Iris gets her dream come true, becomes a painter and doesn't get harassed because it seems like Silas is going to be very creepy. 
I don't know. I'm getting the vibe from the synopsis, but yeah, this book is going to be phenomenal. I can just tell. I think I'm going to be very invested. And just to give you a closer look, this is very stunning. We have a butterfly, obviously, in a cage, but it seems like it's cracked with, I don't know if that's a paint splatter. I feel like it is. I can't tell, or maybe it's blood. Who knows? And then we have a bunch of women who have been painted. And yeah, I, I just feel like this is going to entail a lot of drama and mystery and I, I don't know i just want to know who this toothless urchin is and why they call this person a toothless urchin who knows but nonetheless this is another historical fiction that i will have on my shelves to read and super excited we have another historical fiction for you guys and this one is kind of scary but it's also a huge mystery and that is none other than sin eater a novel by megan campisi now this is a pomegranate and i i don't know what's up with pomegranates i know midnight sun has a pomegranate on top of it that's like eaten or maybe it's like sliced i can't remember Oh yeah, it looks kind of Eden. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like right there. But anyways, this is a second novel that I have with a pomegranate on it, and I, I don't know how to feel about that. But this is a very intriguing book, you guys. So we follow a main character named May, who basically, for the crime of stealing bread, is now punished at 14 years old to become a sin eater, which basically is a shunned woman whose fate is to hear the final confessions of the dying, eat ritual food symbolizing their sins, and thereby shoulder their transgressions to grant their souls access to heaven. She's orphaned, she's friendless, and she, and she is apprenticed to an older sin eater who cannot speak to her. May must make her way in a dangerous and cruel world she barely understands. When a dear heart appears on the coffin of a royal governess who did not confess to the dreadful sin it represents, May must find out who placed it there and why. An extraordinary lyrical feat of imagination, Sin Eater is the story of a world where treason and secrets abound within a corrupt, violent court, and a shunned young woman must uncover a long-buried secret that has resurfaced with a vengeance. Yeah, you guys, I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to read this. I feel like this is going to kind of be like a nail-biting page turner type of novel because who just leaves a dear heart on a person's coffin and why did this person take the secret to the grave that is what i want to know because i feel like something like this like if you know if you're on your deathbed especially if you're a royal governess like you should be able to express your sins especially to somebody who's supposed to be a sin eater i don't really know but it just sounds really weird especially the dear heart thing and I don't know, I don't know how gory this is going to be, but I just know that I'm going to be so invested in this and just feel it in my body that this is going to be a great book. The very last book in today's haul is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. Now, I saw this at Book People, never have heard of it, but I was looking for a romance of some sort, kind of historical fiction, and so I feel like this hit the spot. Now, in this, it is England, it's 1879, and we follow Annabelle Archer, who is one of the first female students at Oxford University, and her scholarship demands that she recruits men of influence to champion the rising women's suffrage movement. Her target is the cold and calculating Duke of Montgomery, commander of Britain's politics, but Montgomery wouldn't be the kingdom's greatest strategist if he couldn't turn the tables and confront Annabelle with an altogether different offer. Dot, 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 dot. Locked in a battle with rising passion and impossible attraction, Annabelle will learn just what it takes to topple a duke. Hmm, you guys, I don't know what that means, but we shall see how many chili peppers this book has. Nonetheless, I think this is going to be an amazing romance book. I feel like I haven't read a historical romance book in quite a while, and I think this is just going to be what I need to get me into that fascination and romanticize England in this time era, especially with Dukes. I just feel like anything with Dukes, you guys, it just... It just has to be said that like books with like royal families involved that have romance and just really badass female characters as the leads. I just, I don't know. It just gets to me. It gives me a vibe. I'm currently enjoying it and I cannot wait to start turning the pages of this book and to figure out who this Duke is and what he means when he says he wants to confront Annabelle with a different offer. We shall see.
this concludes day 11 of our 25 day of bookmish journey honestly guys i am so happy with the amount of books that i hauled today especially the ones that i hauled at half price bookstore because they were in such great condition honestly i was shocked by that and it really didn't take me that long to find these books which is quite fascinating because typically with secondhand bookstores i always find myself spending more and more time just combing through all the books to make sure that they're in great condition and of course i just want to give like a mad props to my independent bookstore book people because of all the books that i hauled i just feel like they have every single book that you could possibly imagine then more compared to your normal bookstore your very popular bookstores out there and yeah you guys i literally just hit the jackpot and i really hope that you found a book in today's haul that you want to buy yourself maybe put it on your christmas list or hey even buy it as a present for a family or a friend or someone you love but with that you guys i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up it really supports my channel and if you haven't already done so please hit that subscribe button you definitely want to stay in the know for the 25 day of bookmish journey and just future other potential content that will be out there in the foreseeable future and as always i will have my social media links down below in case you want to follow me on other platforms but with that i will see you in tomorrow's video bye guys